Our podcast's name is Chapter Clock. It is a student podcast made up of the girls at TGSG. And basically, we talk about the books we have read in our half term so far. This half term, our theme is mystery. And one of the books on the list is called Black Ice by Becca Fitzpatrick. Black Ice is so far about a teenage girl called Brit, who's planning to go backpacking in the Tenton Ridge with her best friend, Corby. She thought of bringing her ex-boyfriend, who broke up with her on prom night and kind of ghosted her for about eight months, but decides not to invite him then. At the gas station, she saw him, and as they were talking, she blurred out, out of jealousy of him, probably seeing other girls. She says, I have a boyfriend over there, as she points over to Mason, a boy who supposedly doesn't even know her name. As he overhears, he surprisingly knows her name and asks and acts as a perfect boyfriend, which kind of creeps her out. But she brushes it off after a long conversation with them on the trip. Calvin already left to go to the mountains in the morning, um, and Colby and Britt were late after a long time. Then they finally headed up to the mountain. Um, in the car, they were doing lots of quizzes and having fun until the snow starts. They can't see anything, and it's hard for them to drive. They find themselves stranded. Um, in my opinion, the first part of the book, um, which I did not explain, but was quite hard to read, and it was quite confusing for me personally. Um, I may read it again because um, in the book um, it has... Um, mentioned what has happened the first time um but overall i'd rate it a four out of five because it was really interesting and once i started reading i couldn't really stop so yeah there seems to be a lot of like cliffhangers in mystery books i don't know if anybody else has a uh, quite a lot of yeah. cliffhangers in mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. my one the book i'm reading which was um one for sorrow um it ended with a like a it ended with a cliffhanger i know they're going to write a second book um but I don't know, mystery books, there's sort of a theme of having a cliffhanger. I don't yeah. know if anyone else found that. It's like, there's, it's always not just one separate story. It's like a long series and it always like cuts you off. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It makes it very interesting for you to read so that if you reach the end of the chapter, you don't want to put it down. So in my book, The Twisted Tree, the first chapter, it was about barely a page long. And I was like, whoa, let me just continue reading real quick. And I, like, I... Stop! I couldn't stop reading for like the entire week, um, and I loved the book. It was a really good book. It was about this girl who ran away after she fell off a tree and lost her eyesight in one eye. But she goes to her grandma's cabin in Norway, and she finds this mysterious man in her house, and all of these weird things start happening happening to her. And um, I'm not going to spoil it, but I love the book, and I would rate it probably a three or four out of ten. I mean five. Um, because, uh, I don't know, it was just really good. And I would recommend it to literally Yeah, I recently found out, like, with mystery books, I haven't really read them yet because they weren't really in my genre. But when I have, I realised the first few chapters is kind of hard to get into, but the second you get sucked in, you get sucked in. Like, you do not put the book down. Like, once I opened up a mystery book, and it was, like, light at that time, and by the time I finished it, it was well dark <laughs> outside. I find that mystery books tend to get me out of a reading slump as well. So if you're yeah. if you haven't like read for a really really long time, pick up a mystery book because you just can't keep. You always turn the page. You're gripped by it all the time. Um, did anyone have any? Um, look, I find a lot of mystery books have multiple character points of views. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um, so uh, I'm reading uh, Karen McManus's latest book, and that has usually about two to three even four, even five um, different points of view, and I find that really quite interesting. But then sometimes I'm like, okay, which character am I reading? I need to, like, go back sometimes a little bit just to follow on what they were talking about. But, yeah, who else has uh, any multiple points of view? Um, I had a multiple point of view story, and it was called My Secret Lies With You. And I think it actually makes it really interesting because you get to see the all the characters' opinions, point of views, and how they think because from one point of view you may think that they're really rude or mean but then for you actually get to see their side of story and actually makes it really interesting because it keeps you intrigued and it keeps you wanting to know more about the character and their backstory it also helps you like realize how they feel and what they're thinking when they do their actions but sometimes it's also quite confusing always going like back and forth and like retelling the story at different parts 
I think it really worked in my book because I the the two main characters Ivy and Audrey they were completely opposing characters so Ivy was quite quiet studious but Audrey was very loud and quite outgoing and I think it really worked because they had these two completely opposite characters and you could see how they're seeing this one tragedy tragedy from both their points of view what was the book called uh one for sorrow I quite like having two different opinions because it makes it a lot more interesting to read because you might think one way and then a character might bring something up that that makes you change your mind and think another way. So I I, I quite like having two different sides. Yeah, I like find out with mystery books, it's nice to have two sides because if you just read one, you might become like yeah, I know this is totally biased topic, but, um, to whatever's happening. In but the one, yeah, series, a different side, the second it kind of leaves you wondering and thinking about it for a um, while. It has loads of different point of views, while the first one has the point of view of I think just Augie and his sister, and maybe a few of like the kids at school, and the kid who's known as the bully in the second one, you can see that he actually went through a lot to get to the fact that he was a bully. But back to horrors, you know. (laughs) (laughs) Who else has uh, a book they want to talk about? Yes, Jen. Um, I'm reading a mystery book. It's called One of Us Lying. And I think it's about this murder having during attention. And like basically the police got involved in interviewing people who were in there. And um, it was in multiple points of views. We get to see how how their everyday lives are. And... um, on the day they were in the detention room of what happened. Um, yeah, I would rate the book like um, a 10 out of 10 because um, it's quite interesting because like, I, really like, uh, I really like it how we get multiple points of views. Did you read the rest of the series? There's um, going to be a new one, I think, next year, which is very exciting. I'm sorry, the last one. Okay, perfect. Another question for you. Um, do you guess who uh, the culprit murderer type person is at the end of the story? Or have you found a book that you honestly could not know until the very last page? Mm-hmm. You all found that you know who it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. So that's, that's very not good. Always, not always. It's it depends mix. on the book. Like on the book. Yeah. But like in this book, the book that I'm reading, which is Artemis Fowl, um, I just started it. I'm only on to like page seventy five. But so far it's like quite a lot has happened. But um in Artemis Fowl, like the whole book is about the supervillain. So I already like knew straight away from the start that he was mm. the villain. Mm. Yeah. I quite like books that keep you guessing as well. So instead of giving a lot of clues away and letting you decide, oh, I think this person's the villain. I like books that quite, let it out quite slowly, so it keeps you guessing until it's finally like dramatically uncovered. Yeah, um, I recently read Good Girl's Guide to Murder, and the person who actually did it, they kept suspecting it was um, like that, like they were the murderer, but they kept changing their minds due to new evidence. So you sort of were like, oh wait, no, I, I definitely know it's this person. Oh wait, hang on a second, maybe it's not. So it, it really it, like it was you couldn't figure it out at all. And then all of their accusations seemed so crazy that you thought that they were wrong, but really um, the circumstances were correct. So, What, what I found with my book, uh, the One for Sorrow book, is that they, kept, they revealed little parts of the thing. They started discovering lots of little parts of what to leading to whoever, who, you know, who did it. And I like that because I could, I could still be interested in the book but I was also I was also not told everything at the beginning because I don't think if you're told everything it doesn't really work. Um, it's kind of off topic, but um, I was watching this one series um, on Netflix. Um, it's based on a book, but I never read the book. Um, basically, it's about this girl who her father gets shot or something, and she goes to this person to help her train to be an assassin to kill whoever killed her father and um at the start of the show like everyone thought it was the person who was training her who was a person who killed um her father but um later on it's it's kind of predictable in a way but later on it slowly um 
the person slowly tries to make you think that's another person but in the end it's what you thought it was if you get me but yeah it's kind of predictable in a way but yeah Speaking of adaptations, Artemis Fowl is obviously an adaptation Not recently. A very good one. Oh, <laughs> yeah. it, it wasn't very good it, because it missed out quite a lot of things. Um, not that I remember because it was very. It didn't leave much of a significant impact on me. On me, so they missed out quite a lot of things, and a lot of the characters as well. They were changed a lot like the father he wasn't up in the book he doesn't actually appear but in the movie he comes in so that kind of changed it a lot i think it's quite hard to adapt a book into a movie well that's why i think the the lord of the rings book and the hobbit book they were actually adapted quite well and i get that they're three hours long and not Mm -hmm. not everybody likes that but when you i think if you're going to adapt something into a film that it needs to be done well otherwise it loses that element of joy that people have got from the book and it just disappoints them with the yeah. show. Yeah. Harry Potter's brings to mind. Mm. Yeah. 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 Um, um, who uh, was going next? Sorry. Uh, sorry. Um, I read this book, The Promised Neverland. It's like a comic, a manga, but um, I read the book. There was a big thing online. I'm not sure if you heard about it, but when they adapted the second season, they completely missed out five arcs if I'm correct and everyone was really annoyed and apparently the studio which created it um they um it happened a few years ago as well um where they blew up the place basically but they tried to um burn the studio basically um because is obviously manga is a very big thing in Japan and there are a lot of um, people who are very seriously into it. Yeah. And they basically tried to burn the building. They luckily didn't succeed, but yeah. it, the adaptation was really rubbish. Like, I, I couldn't even, like, finish the first two episodes. It was really rubbish, and yeah. it kind of disappointed me, but, yeah. I find with comic adaptations, you have to be, like, really careful because they can be very unrealistic, like the Umbrella Academy, uh, with yeah. um, Klaus, yeah. his superpower is floating, and Diego can hold his breath for as long. As she suddenly like really surprises you, and I think it was quite exciting to read that because it made me really think. You know, wow, you don't know what's going to happen. I thought I knew. You know, I was reading the yeah. book for a while. I thought I knew what was going to happen, but I really didn't. Yeah. Have you seen the adaptations of them? Yeah, yeah, the, the, movie. the first, first one's one. okay. The, the, I don't know why I'm the first opening this okay. conversation because it always gets me annoyed every yeah. time. <laughs> the first one's okay. First okay. One's mm-hmm. And then the second Just... couple were disappointing. Yeah. It kind of killed that whole vibe. vibe. Yeah. yeah. So after that, just nothing really oh, no. happened. All the fact that they split the last book into two films and never actually completed the series. Exactly. No, yeah. And then they said they were going to do a TV series. I'm like, well, where's the TV series? But then I like uh, the actress who played... Tris Pryor, yeah, yeah, and yeah. Tobias. So I just, yes, don't, yeah, don't get me started on that. <laughs> um, I mean, um, when, because I used to read a lot of books when I was younger. I really don't know why. Sometimes when I remember, I used to read so much books, and I can't even remember the name of any of them. <laughs> but me and my dad, we read a lot of Lee Child. I think that's his name. Or yeah, something. yeah. Um, Jack Reacher. My Yesterday we were on Prime and there was like an adaptation of Jack Reacher or something. Um, my dad was like, "Oh yeah, you used to love that book." I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, what? that happens when you read a lot. <laughs> I'm like, um, "What?" And then he was like, "Oh yeah, you used to read that book with me all the time." I'm like, "What the hell?" And he's like, "Oh yeah, you'll love it." And we we were going to watch it yesterday, but then apparently it wasn't there. There was only the trailer. But I'm thinking of um, watching that apparently. Yeah. I think the books that stick out the most for you are the for me anyway are the ones that I really really enjoyed. Yeah. So even now um Percy the Percy Jackson series will I think forever will probably be one of my favorite comfort series because I just I found I was able to you know see myself in the characters. I don't know I don't know if you've got any other books you saw your character self mm-hmm. in the characters. But yeah. I think my comfort book would be Coraline. And I read books. That's um, an interesting one to be. I, I don't know. I just, there's something about it. Um, the movie always used to intrigue me, but I never actually watched it because I didn't know how to. 
and where to watch it anyways. You come over to my yeah. house. But <laughs> <laughs> like when I was younger, so I was like, you know, I'm just going to read it. And it was really good. Actually, the way I started reading it is because I used to do this like odd club called Lamza where you just memorize poems and book passages. Oh, yeah. was so it, it was a bit, but you know, <laughs> I thought it was nice though. Yeah, that was, you got a lollipop after you finished yeah. it. And I remember like Miss was, my teacher was like, okay, well you have to read this book and annotate it. I was like, okay. And that's my, like my first time reading it. I really loved it. And now I still, I still do love it. And I reread it like all the time. Mm. It's just like mm. something, if I could pin a book in my brain, it'll probably be that. Yeah, I got I got told to read Coraline in year six because you know you have like those group reading classes and they put you. Oh yeah. yeah. I generally always hate those, but they gave me Coraline. I was like, okay, fine, whatever. <laughs> and then um, I read it and I was telling my mom about it. It's like, oh, friend of ours loves that one. You should watch the movie. I'm like, sure. And then as I got to like throughout the end, where the the button mom oh. became other mother. Oh, yeah, the, the other the, mother. The other mother <laughs> became like the spider. Oh, yeah. Like, Ooh. Ooh. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Maybe I will watch the movie. And I got like, it was so interesting. I love the movies. I did. I've never actually read the book. I've seen the movie. Yeah, I've seen the movie. The I haven't read the book. It's so good. The we book. In the book group, who read Coraline? I've never, I, I've never watched the movie, but I did read it. And um, by the way, if anyone doesn't know what it's about, it's about a girl who moves house, and while she's unpacking, she finds a door. And she goes through the door, sees her parents, but she sees different versions of them. And I quite liked it, except the start of it. I feel like I've read a lot of books where the start of it, it just seems a bit slow and I'm like, get to the point. Otherwise, I'm just going to put this book down. Mm. Um, it was, even though it was like slow at the start, it was like really hard to put down once you started getting through like the middle part. And it was really good. I've noticed that. Sorry, sorry, I've noticed that quite often at the beginning of books. Why it's quite long is that when after re- when we're reading it, there's quite often quite a bit of foreshadowing in some books. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. The beginning, and that's why I really enjoy rereading books because I love finding foreshadowing, especially in mystery books. Yeah, I find that for some reason like really enjoyable. But going back to like the rereading thing, I think it's like if you really like a book, then when you reread it, although you like kind of know what happens, you, you still find it like really exciting. And it still like takes you back and gives you like that feeling, but by books you don't like. Yeah, um, yeah. it just kind of brings back like memories. Memories. Yeah. Memories. Um, yeah. Memories. I reread all the time. Like if anyone in my form knows, mm-hmm. um, I carry oh, really? is this it, is book it? called Little Stars by Jacqueline Wilson. The amount of times <laughs> I have read it, I could, it I could not more than that. I've probably read it like in the triple digits because I just can't be bothered to switch out another book for it. So you'll be able but, to read the whole book Probably. of my heart but the thing is no matter how many times i've read it and no matter how much i know what's going to happen i still like reading it and seeing how the main character's mindset changes throughout the whole yeah. thing and how her life goes mm. i just i don't know something about rereading books is very comforting to me yeah what, yeah. what i love about reading books is that it's like a movie in your head like yeah. before they turn into a movie and they change all the favorite like the good parts it's like you can transport it into your old um your like your own world mm. and to make it more relatable you can either use it in a setting that you know like you might say this girl went into the library and then you're like oh that's my school library like in your head you can make it just yeah. your school library yeah. to make it nicer for yourself one book that i read was um zoom i read it when i was quite young but i reread it a couple of weeks ago and it's i didn't when i was younger i didn't i just read it thinking oh this is quite a good book you know like i'd read it again sometime but now I come to think about it, it is quite a mysterious book, and I think it's good, and I think more authors should um, make more mystery books for younger kids, because it really got my... Right. I just oh, imagine if you... So, as part of Chapter O'Clock's book club, I am really excited to invite two authors to our podcast. We have Sue Woolman who one of our book clubbies has read one of her books and absolutely loved it. And I have a very brief interview with her, which is amazing. And we also have uh, a new little feature on the podcast, which will be called On the Radar. And this is all books uh, within our genre that we've really enjoyed during this term um, and looking forward to reading them next year so we have YA thriller horror writer Cynthia Murphy um, who is going to give us an extract of a book 
of hers that is coming out in January, so you get an exclusive. All of her books will be available to borrow in the circle from next year. So I really hope you enjoy this. Hi everyone, I'm Cynthia Murphy and I'm the author of Last One to Die and the upcoming Win, Lose, Kill, Die. Everyone wants to be head girl until the murders begin. The students of Morton Academy are high achievers, selected based on academic excellence. So, when a series of murders target the school's brightest and best, the pressure is on. Someone is determined to clear their path to the top, and they'll stop at nothing. But who is it? Win, Lose, Kill, Die Chapter 1 I didn't mean to kill the first one. Honest. It was just too easy, I suppose. She was already in the water, and when I plunged my hands in to help her out, I kind of changed my mind. Something inside snapped. I held little Miss Perfect's head down and waited for her to stop thrashing around. It took longer than I thought, and then she just floated there. Limp. Pathetic, really. Accidental death, according to the experts. That's nearly right. Like I said, it's not like I set out to do it. It felt good, though. Chapter Two I can't believe we're back here already. Summer had passed by in a daze, thanks to the bang to the head I took at the end of last term. Instead of going to the beach parties with my friends and staying up to watch the sunrise like I planned, it was full of police interviews and PTSD. That last day of term had started so perfectly and then... Liz! A sharp hiss and an elbow in my ribs brings me back to the present. Taylor is standing up straight, her gorgeous hazel eyes focused on the stage, for all the world playing the perfect mourner. I mimic her, my gaze following hers to a large easel draped in black cloth. It's displaying a large photograph of Morgan, the girl who drowned in July. Pay attention. Taylor says this out of the corner of her mouth, like one of those creepy ventriloquists' puppets. She does it so effortlessly. Not one muscle in her face moves. I guess I haven't recovered as well as I thought, even after all those hospital visits over the summer. I try to concentrate, I really do, but my mind wanders as the headmistress's words blur into one long sermon, each pause punctuated by the squeaking sound of rubber heels on the parquet floor. Autumn is seeping into the corners of the building already, and the air smells of rain and damp, freshly laundered uniforms. I study the picture. Morgan was pretty, in a preppy, Reese with a spoon and cruel intentions kind of a way. She looked so sweet and unassuming, which I knew was total bull. Truth is, Morgan had the personality of a venomous snake. You did not cross her if you knew what was good for you. She'd make your life at Morton a total misery if she felt like it. It had been her idea to take the boat out on the lake that night. Her big moment after being sworn in as head girl. She had bullied most of us into it from what I remember. Though, admittedly, I don't remember much. Not after the boat flipped. Dr Patel, the headmistress, ends her monologue with the request for a minute of silence. She's flanked by several members of the faculty. Some of them are crying, dabbing handkerchiefs or tissues to their faces. Her sharp black trouser suit is conservative. Appropriate for a pupil's memorial, but super stylish and paired with some killer heels. I can't help but admire anyone who can walk in shoes that high, never mind run the country's most elite boarding school in them. The rest of the staff look frumpy in comparison. I watch the clock and sway slightly. I'm not used to standing up so long after spending the summer in bed watching 90s movies. Taylor ignores me. Her head down, eyes closed, the perfect pupil. 
and mourner. Her long naturally red hair falls like a curtain, spilling over the grey tweed of her blazer. Morton Academy's very own Cheryl Blossom, standing right beside me. Hello, I'm Sue Woolman. I'm the author of I Know You Did It and um, other books as well. And I'm also a school librarian and I love the sound of your book club. It sounds really great. And I might steal the idea of having a mystery and um, thriller book club for my students. Um, we have various book clubs, but that's not one of them. I love the questions you sent me and I'm just gonna have a little look. Why do you write thrillers? Well, I love the excitement of them and when um, a plot comes together, I find plots actually quite hard, um, but when it all comes together, it's intensely satisfying and um, I really like the twists and turns and also the reveal at the end, um, if that works. Sometimes as an author, you're not sure whether it works, but when it does, that, that's, that's a lovely moment as an author. And the other question was, what is your recipe for a perfect book? Well, I think it's quite simple. It's a book that you can't put down and it's a book that um, um, has very rounded characters, a lovely plot and, and you just really care about what happens and it stays with you um, long after you've read it. So those are my answers and um, I'd like to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and a lovely end of term. Bye.